Hello, everyone, and welcome to week five of USMLE Domination High Yield Tutorials. We have an exciting, exciting uh, topic today that's very high yield, so let's get right into it. Uh, I want to do something different. I want to start with a high yield question that we'll come back to in the end. So the question here is the finding shown on the CT scan can also be associated with what other finding? Is it acromegaly, spina bifida, non-accidental trauma, or a syrinx? And it's referring to the finding that's seen on this CT image through the head. And I promise we'll come back to this high yield question at the very end. So what we're going to talk about today are posterior fossa malformations. We're going to talk about Chiari 1, Chiari 2, and Dandy Walker. These are super high yield topics that you're very likely to see on the USMLE exam. So with Chiari 1, uh, what this is, is this typically is when the cerebellar tonsils herniate through the foramen magnum. So the foramen magnum can be drawn with this you know, imaginary line between the basion, which is the anterior margin of the foramen magnum, and the epistheon, which is the posterior margin. And if the cerebellar tonsils, which are going all the way down here, go past this line or the foramen magnum, then you know you have a Chiari 1 malformation. If it's more than five millimeters below this imaginary line here, as it is here, we know you have a Chiari 1 malformation. This is a sagittal T1 weighted image through the brain. Typically, patients with Chiari 1 can be asymptomatic, but they can present with an occipital headache about 30% of times, and they can also have cerebellar symptoms like ataxia and nystagmus. So those are how Chiari 1 patients present, and they typically present later on in life, they're not necessarily as a child. A very high yield association in the USMLE is uh, the Chiari 1 and the syrinx. So they love this association. So Chiari 1 has a high association with the syrinx, which is cystic dilation of the central spinal canal. Notice here, this is a T2 weighted image to the spine. The bright signal here is the CSF, okay? And this you know, gray signal is the spine, is, is the spinal cord. But notice that in the middle of the spinal cord, you have the cystic bright dilatation uh, within the central canal. This is known as a syrinx. And this has a very high association with patients that uh, have a Chiari 1 malformation. In some reports, anywhere from 35 to 70% of patients with Chiari 1 have a syrinx. Moving on to Chiari 2. Chiari 2 is more severe than a Chiari 1. It typically presents much earlier um, in age range. Uh, patients can present with hydrocephalus, lower extremity spasticity. They can even have bowel and bladder dysfunction. And they can even have symptoms related to brainstem compression like apnea or swallowing difficulties. So typically what you're looking for is not only is, has a cerebellum herniated through the frame and magnum, but even part of the medulla has herniated past the frame and magnum. Again, if we draw this imaginary line between the basion and the epicyon, we can see the cerebellar tonsils have herniated here and also the medulla, the, you know, this is the midbrain, the pons, and then the medulla right here, this has herniated through the frame and magnum. So when you see both the cerebellum and the medulla herniate, that's a sign that this is a Chiari 2 malformation. Other secondary signs are, you can see this structure here, there's beaking here of the tectum, which is the dorsal part of the midbrain, right? And you have this enlarged massa intermedia, which is sort of a bridge between the paired thalami across the midline of the third ventricle. So when you have an enlarged massa intermedia, uh, tectal beaking, and you have herniation of both the uh, cerebellum and the medulla, you're looking at a Chiari 2 malformation. A very high yield US only favorite is the association between a Chiari 2 and a myelomeningocele. Okay, a myelomeningocele. Myelomeningocele means that there has been herniation of meninges and neural tissue through a defect in the spine. So if you take a look here, this here is a T1 weighted image through the spine because the CSF here is dark and you have the spinal tissue that's gray. And then a T2 weighted image through the spine, the CSF is bright and the Spinal cord tissue is, you know, heterogeneously gray. Notice here, inferiorly, you have CSF or meningeal tissue and spinal or neural tissue um, in the form of cauda equina, spinal nerve roots herniating through a defect here, covered here by the skin. This is a myelomeningocele. Same thing here. We have bright signal, which is a CSF or meningeal tissue, as well as uh, neural tissue in the form of cauda equina nerve roots herniating through this defect confined within. Um, at the skin surface here. So this is a nice example of what a myelomeningocele is, very high association again with a Chiari 2 malformation. Spinal dysraphism is not an element of a Chiari 1 malformation. And finally, the Dandy Walker malformation is when you have vermian agenesis and you have, you know, cystic, uh, a posterior fossa cyst that communicates directly with the fourth ventricle. So notice here, this is a huge posterior fossa cyst. 
that communicates directly with the fourth ventricle here. This is a normal CT brain where this is the fourth ventricle right here and you have the cerebellar tissue right here, right? This is the midline vermis. These are the right and the left cerebellar hemispheres. This is a normal CT, but notice how abnormal the Dandy Walker malformation is here. A very high yield favorite is the association between a Dandy Walker and a spina bifida. Spina bifida is when you have uh, failure of fusion of the posterior spinal elements. So if you take a look here, this is the lumbar spine, L1, L2, L3, L4. Um, excuse me, this is, uh, this is L, yeah, L4 and this is L5. And you can see here at L5, there's a spinous process here and you can, and you can see the lamina connecting the spinous process on both sides. But if you look at S1, there's a nice cleft here between the lamina at the spinous process and there's failure of fusion of both of these lamina at the level of the spinous process. So this is a nice example of what spina bifida occulta is here. Lack of fusion of the posterior elements of the spine. High association with Dandy Walker malformation. Dandy Walker uh, can present as an incidental finding or it can present as an enlarged head circumference in a child or a baby. Um, and there can be signs of hydrocephalus as well. Not only is spina bifida an association with Dandy Walker, but you can also have heterotopias, neural tube defects, even cardiac anomalies and cleft lip and cleft palate that can be associated with Dandy Walker malformation. So the must know USMLE points for posterior fossa malformations for HRE1, you're looking only for herniation of the cerebellar tonsils to the frame and magnum, high association with a syrinx. HRE2, you're looking for herniation of both the cerebellum and the medulla through the frame and magnum, and the high yield association is a myelomeningocele in the spine as I showed you. And finally, a Dandy Walker, you're looking for a large posterior fossa cyst that communicates with the fourth ventricle and the high yield association there is spina bifida. So coming back to our final high yield question, the finding shown on this CT uh, can also be associated with what other finding? Well, first of all, you have a CT imaging showing the Dandy Walker malformation. You have this large posterior fossa cyst that communicates directly with the fourth ventricle. We know that this is associated with spina bifida and that's the correct answer. Thank you so much for watching this. Please tune in next week. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Make this free knowledge go viral. Spread this to all your friends, colleagues, and let's all ace the USMLE together.